So we have an update when it comes to James Storm, the cowboy James Storm, his current contract status when it comes to Impact Wrestling. Now, of course, fans are still buzzing and still talking about this week's episode of Impact Wrestling on Access TV. They're saying it's one of the better episodes of Impact Wrestling in recent history, and that has a big part due to the surprise appearances we saw during the event. Of course, uh, this week's episode of Impact Wrestling saw uh, surprise appearances from the likes of Matt Hardy uh, from AEW, Private Party, AEW President and CEO founder himself, Tony Khan, uh, AEW producer, former X Division champion Jerry Lynn was there too. Uh, but one such name that also returned was also TNA original, former TNA World Heavyweight Champion, former multiple time Impact World Tag Team Champion, the Cowboy James Storm, making his return once more to Impact Rest. Now, James Storm's been kind of floating on and off when it comes to Impact Wrestling. Um, obviously, he made some appearances towards the end of last year, appeared at Bound for Glory during the Call Your Shot Gauntlet match teamed up with Chris Sabin for turning point when Alex Shelley was out injured but then he once again departed Impact at the time it was just announced he was just coming in to do a couple of TV tapings he even said in an interview he was just helping the company out uh, doing them a favour but he wasn't signed of anyone hadn't signed a contract and certainly wasn't under contract when it comes to Impact Wrestling now when people saw his return this past week myself included a lot of people said does this mean that James Storm had once again re-signed with Impact Wrestling has he now signed a full term full time contract what's the situation with James Storm but it looks like James Storm is basically in the same boat as former WWE superstar Matt Cardona in the sense that he hasn't signed a contract with Impact Wrestling as of yet. Now, in a report coming from Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select, it's Fightful's Patreon service, be sure to check that out and subscribe to him. Uh, while James Storm, of course, worked this past week's tapings, much like Matt Cardona, he currently doesn't have a full-time contract with Impact Wrestling as of right now. Uh, Storm, of course, is no stranger of Impact Wrestling. As I mentioned, he's been part of the company on and off for the better part of 20 years at this point. As I mentioned before this past week, his last appearance came back in November of last year, teaming up with Chris Sabin to defeat the team of Triple XL, AC Romero and Larry D. But Sapp is reporting that James Storm recorded multiple matches as part of this week's television tapings for Impact Wrestling. So of course this week isn't going to be the last time we see uh, the Cowboy on our TV screens when it comes to Impact. He's going to be on there for at least the foreseeable future. Now Storm of course revealed last year that if not for the current COVID-19 pandemic, he would have actually been under contract right now with WWE because he was scheduled to be part of the Raw brand uh, as uh, specifically Paul Heyman at the time the executive director of Monday Night Raw wanted um, James Storm to be a part of his plans there but obviously the pandemic changed everything and uh, he had that contract offer rescinded unfortunately got into the best shape of his life but uh, he could not um, did not appear and sign with WWE so that's the update when it comes to James Storm so this isn't really shocking or surprising really I think Impact, if you look at Impact in the in the course of the recent history, they have a pattern when it comes to how they sign people. And James Storm is no different, really. I think back to Eric Young and Deanna Parazzo when they signed with Impact last year. It's very rare at this point that Impact just hands out a full-time contract, that's you, you're in. Unless you're the Good Brothers or unless you're Heath, it's rare at this point. I think what Impact does like to do what they prefer to do is they like to get you in for a couple of TV tapings. They like to feel things out. They like to feel your dedication for impact. They like to feel out what they can do with you creatively. And then eventually down the line, they might work out a deal with you. That's what happened with Eric Young. That's what happened with Deanna Parazzo. EC3 was the same. He came in short-term deal, a couple of TV tapings and a pay-per-view match. And then he left and went to Ring of Honor. Deanna Parazzo, it was the same with her. It was the same with Eric Young. Come in, not on a full-time deal, just on an agreement. Okay, you work these tapings, these tapings, these tapings. Things. And then eventually they say, look, we're happy with how things are going. The talent is happy while things are going creatively. They're happy to be tied down once again because in the situation of Diana Peraza and Eric Young, they just come out of long-term WWE contracts. They don't want to get tied down into something they're not happy with once again. So there is always this back and forth. There's always this back and forth. And whilst there's James Storm is making these TV tapings, whilst he's making these appearances for Impact... That, that line of dialogue, that uh, that communication between both parties is always going to be ongoing. So just because right now he hasn't signed a long-term deal with Impact, just because he hasn't signed a full-term contract uh, with Impact as of right now, that doesn't mean that won't happen in the future. Uh, I think the fact that he's making appearances, as I mentioned this past November, for turning points, the fact that he's making the appearance now, and he's going to be appearing on multiple episodes of Impact over the course of the next five or six weeks... To me, that's promising. To me, that's promising. And I mentioned this before. We spoke about it uh, a couple of days ago and we spoke about James Storm's return to Impact. 
and you have to look at the options available to him right now. And he did have an absolutely crazy 2020. As I mentioned, look at the timeline of his year last year. It's insane. He starts off the year working with the NWA. He's on NWA Power. He's won off of the NWA World Tag Team Champions with Eli Drake. They're doing a tag team and all that kind of stuff. Then bang, um, the pandemic hits. But actually before the pandemic hits, I've kind of got a bit ahead of myself there. Royal Rumble weekend, he gets a call. Do you want to be part of the Royal Rumble? He's like, I can't. I can't do the Royal Rumble. I'm working with the NWA right now. I've actually got a, an event I have to do at the time. They say, you know what? Don't worry about it. I think this is with Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman says, I want you to come in. We're going to have you in. We're going to have you go on Monday Night Raw. I think Bobby Roode at the time was on Raw. They were probably going to do something with those two. But James Storm finally was going to get his break on the main roster in WWE. Of course, he had the brief cameo of NXT back in, when was that, 2015? I think it was. He decided to go with Impact at the time and not sign with WWE and NXT. So possibly this was his last chance of... Uh, going to the main roster for WWE after all these years of being in the pro wrestling business, he was going to appear on Raw and sign a WWE contract. And then unfortunately, pandemic hits, changes that. His plan was to debut on Raw after WrestleMania. It doesn't happen. Uh, and they just say, look, we've got to hold off. We're not hiring anyone at the moment. And then obviously WWE then starts releasing people as part of the budget cuts associated with the pandemic. Ironically, the people, one of the people uh, that they did release as part of those budget cuts was the Good Brothers, who James Storm shared a ring with on Tuesday, just the irony of it all. So then he doesn't hear anything from WWE for a while, but at the same time, he's training like a madman. He's getting in the shape of his life. He looks to be in the shape of his life. In addition to that, he's getting regular physicals and doing every single test under the sun because he wants to make sure that eventually, when he has that physical for WWE, it's no problem. He can go straight in to go, go to Monday Night Raw. He'd even signed his WWE contract at that point. He just hadn't had the physical and hadn't been given a start date. So obviously the pandemic changes that. Gets to July time, he hasn't heard anything for a couple of months and then obviously the contract offers rescinded and then he doesn't get the opportunity that I think a lot of people wished he would have got. So he's back to not really sure what's going on from going from, you know, getting the, the dream contract late in your career, getting finally the opportunity to be, to be on the big stage, getting that pulled away. It was, what next? I'm in the shape of my life, but I've just, the rug's been pulled beneath me kind of deal. And then he does the appearances for Impact at the end of the year. As I mentioned, shows up at Bound for Glory, shows up at Turning Point as well, just the TV tapings, and then disappears once more. I always felt that considering the year that he had last year with, I mean, he could go back to the NWA, but who really knows what the NWA is going to do in 2021? And they've got, they've got the affiliation with AEW, and I know that Nick Aldis is saying that the NWA Power Show on YouTube is going to be back in 2021, and I really do hope it, it does come back because I was a big fan of that show. But... Is the NWA secure at this point? No. I think if you're James Storm, you look at that and go, I could go back there, but what's the situation there? WWE doesn't look to be happening. Um, AEW, frankly, I don't know if there's a lot of interest from AEW to James Storm. I'm not sure if it really benefits him to go to AEW at this point. As I mentioned, a lot of the time when I speak about people uh, going to AEW, you have to look at the roster. You have to look at how big that roster is, how bloated that roster is, and uh, the limited amount of TV time that they have and the opportunities that he would have. As I mentioned, this isn't James Storm of 10 years ago or anything like that. This is James Storm later on in his career. How many more opportunities is he going to get to really make a statement and do great work? I mean, he could go to AEW and be a massive success. I just think it's a risk at this point. And that's not to say that if he were to sign a full-time contract of Impact, he's playing it safe. I just think that's a better place for him right now. I think that's a better place for him right now. Let's say that this contract, this next contract he signs, wherever it is, is the last big contract of his career. It, to me, it makes a lot of sense just from the creative point of view, from his career point of view, from a poetic point of view to finish up where he really made his name and where he really truly started out. And that's in Impact Wrestling. I think to me that makes total sense you've got the history that he's got with the company obviously they want to promote the impact plus app having him there they can do all of these documentaries they can have him talk through his career they've got all of this footage of everything this guy's done in his career practically every big moment that's happened in his career happened in impact wrestling so they can play off that nicely and chris he can still be a main eventer james storm he absolutely can be a main eventer still i have no doubt in my mind and i think that's something that impact are lacking right now i do think they're lacking that top top tier baby face and you know I, i'm not saying that james storm's the same age as terry funk or anything like that but having that top tier baby face that's the veteran in the company that's been there seen there done it always mr impact wrestling they don't really have that right now you've got eric young he's a heel he's been with impact a long time obviously he's had his periods in and out of the company but 
they don't have that top, top baby face. Again, I liken it to a Terry Funk of the top baby face, the legend in that company who can still compete at the highest level and still can be a world champion. That's James Storm. He does fill that niche in Impact and he'd be a, he'd be a really important player. I think a really important player to Impact. Uh, so obviously right now he hasn't signed a contract with Impact Wrestling. And as I stated before, that's not to say that he won't. That's not to say that he won't because if the recent signings when it comes to Impact have proved us anything, it's that they, they take their time and they like to feel things out and anything can happen. So it's going to be interesting, I think, because of course, Chris Sabin and James Storm lost this past week on Impact Wrestling. They had that main event against Private Party, who of course had Matt Hardy in their corner. They lost. Why did they lose? They lost because AEW producer and coach Jerry Lynn got involved and Jerry Lynn was ringside with the AEW president, CEO and founder Tony Khan. So obviously, as the report mentioned by Sean Ross Sapp, as he mentioned that uh, James Storm is going to be on Impact TV for the next few weeks, I would assume, given the way that that match ended, they're either going to be put into the match between Private Party and the Good Brothers at No Surrender, or we could see a scenario where Saban and Storm somehow are feuding with AEW, or they're feuding with um, Jerry Lynn and, and Tony Khan. Obviously, Tony Khan and Jerry Lynn aren't going to have matches or anything like that, but we could see a scenario where Saban and Storm, they're angry that this title shot was was taken away from them by Jerry Lynn and Tony Khan. Maybe they face off against another AEW tag team at No Surrender. That could be a situation there. So there's a lot for James Storm to do going forward in Impact Wrestling. There certainly is a lot for him to do. And uh, as I mentioned, I, I hope just because he hasn't signed a contract right now, I hope that he does sign one eventually. And that goes the same with Matt Cardona. I mentioned that with Matt Cardona before. Matt Cardona worked the TV tapings. They're going to see how it goes. Just because he worked these TV tapings doesn't mean they're not going to work the next one. And Matt Cardona is the same when it comes to James Storm. Of course, Matt Cardona doesn't have the history that James Storm has with Impact Wrestling. But I think the the thing you have to look at for Matt Cardona is Impact Wrestling. You can't you can't change my mind on this one. Uh, Matt Cardona in Impact Wrestling that is the best best place for him to be right now. I think to prove people wrong, to have great matches, to have long form matches, to be involved in main events, to possibly win world championships. That's the place for Matt Cardona to be right now. He's not going to do that in AEW. Um, he's not going to do that if he goes back to WWE. He's, I don't think he's going to do that in Japan. He could go do that if he did to, went to Ring of Honor or NWA. Again, Ring, Ring of Honor is obviously a possibility, but the NWA, you don't know what's going on. He could go to MLW. That's a possibility, I suppose. But Impact Wrestling recently does have a lot of buzz. Are they a bigger company than Ring of Honor or MLW right now? I would probably argue they are, just in terms of the buzz that they have. People are talking about them. This affiliation with AEW uh, in terms of Impact Wrestling has been very successful for them. Yes, the ratings had the big spike in the first week. This week, not as much. I think they actually went down, coming out of Hard to Kill. But in terms of the popularity on social media, the fact that Impact's actually part of the conversation right now, Impact Wrestling is absolutely the best place for James Storm and people like Matt Cardona to be right now. So obviously they fall into the category of they haven't signed full-time contracts with Impact as of yet, but that doesn't mean that's not a possibility for the future. Anything can and will happen in the world of pro wrestling, so we just have to keep our eyes open and our ears open and watch and listen to what's going to happen soon because I think we're going to see a lot of twists and turns as we head into No Surrender in a couple of weeks' time. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on the news that James Storm hasn't signed a contract of Impact Wrestling as of yet. He's working on a per appearance deal and is just taking place at the current TV tapings, but anything could happen in the future. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about Impact Wrestling, WWE, AEW, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community, drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video too, please do smash a like on the like button. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, Ready, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or how you come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.